Blog Talk Radio. Here at ACO Radio, American Communications Online, or any affiliated stations or websites are not responsible for what guests, hosts, or call-ins may say. All programming is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Hello world, this is TJ Morris and you're listening to American Communications Online and TJ Morris ET Radio is our station brand. So welcome aboard all you ground troops spinning around smartly on the planet. This is our Sunday show. We're back on Sundays. This is August 16th, 2020, and it's a really beautiful day here in the panhandle of Florida on the Gulf Coast in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Beautiful, sunny summer day, and life goes on. I'm so excited tonight. I've got two people from California and two people from Hawaii. So let me get started today because James Tolley is our facilitator today uh, from Maui, Hawaii, but I've had... uh, a couple of people I've got to get on here because they're really helping me with my radio shows. But uh, let me introduce Tommy Hawksblood of the Big Island. So, Tommy, you know how we do this. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Tommy Hawksblood. I'm on the Big Island, which is right across from where he is. Uh, what's going on here? We've got so many things going on with weather, insects, and you name it. Uh, but it's pretty active. But uh, this should be an interesting day. We've got a new topic for today. Let's see how far it goes. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Suzanne, would you like to go next? Yeah, I would love it. Hey, first of all, TJ, thank you for including me and bringing me on with you. It's always an exciting adventure. And I'm here in Dana Point, California, and the weather is just perfect. It's a um, 74 degrees uh, during the day, and I am feeling alive, connected, and content to be here. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Suzanne. She does another show with me as her, does her husband just last night, Rich Flynn, artist of California. Introduce yourself. Well, PJ, you sound great. My name's uh, Rich Flynn. I'm in Dana Point also. Yeah, it's beautiful here. And I'm looking forward to a good show. Thank you, Rich. All right, James Tully, you have the floor. You are our special guest, and we're so happy to have a new person join all of us with our ACO Club, our Ascension Center, our Love and Light Healing Community in 2020. Now, I understand you're going to help us, and uh, I've got your little messages, so I changed out what I put on here. But I hope, uh, I don't think we can see everything you sent me, but I've got quite a few things. So, Genuine Human Happiness and How to Cultivate It, James Tolley. You have Peaceful Lee. So, would you introduce yourself, James, the way you like to be introduced to the world, please? Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. I'm really happy to be speaking about communication skills and how they can contribute to human happiness and better relationships. Uh, my name is James Tolley. I have a site. Um, it's called peaceful.ly. And on that site, I, I like to go into communication skills and communication breakdowns and things like that um, that we can learn from. And I'm a longtime Buddhist. I'm fascinated in uh, with the dynamics of collaboration and competition between people and how they communicate on an interpersonal level and also on a societal level with mass communications. And I've been a couples communication coach for years and a student of nonviolent communication, a student of Harville Hendricks and his wife, Helen LaKelly Hunt's Safe Conversations, and I've created some of my own techniques in order to help couples who have a hard time speaking with each other and other people who have a hard time speaking with each other really understand what's important to the other person and have productive conversations really quickly that actually uh, bring out um, the best in people and um, and resolve conflicts constructively. Wow, what a great introduction for our spirituality today. So I really appreciate everybody showing up. Let me see who this is in New Orleans. New Orleans, you want to say hi or are you just listening? Um, I Actually, yes, hello. Um, I'm Debbie, and um, I have a 
I have a really hard time with communication with certain individuals. Wow, well, we appreciate you calling in, and we'll have questions for James on the last hour. Let's hear what okay. he has to say about all of us, and we'll get back to you, Miss Debbie Please from New awesome. Orleans. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, you bet. Okay, James, you've got the floor. I'm going to mute, and Tommy will be listening with himself muted, as uh, so will Suzanne and uh, Rich. So when you get to a point that you need a break, or you want to ask us questions in the last hour, we'll let Debbie or anybody else that wants to call in. Is that fine with you? Sound like a plan? Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds fantastic. All right, I'm going to mute. You have the floor, sir. Thank you so much. So the the reason why communication skills are really essential in our spiritual life is because, first of all, we are essentially spiritual beings, and that's not some kind of woo-woo thing or I'm kind of imagining it or making it up or it's some kind of a narrative or something. It's really that we are at our essence in our, in our inner world. We are made up of thoughts and feelings, longings, desires, and, um, you know, and that inner, that rich inner world really drives our world in the, in the outer world. It drives our, our actions, creates all the things in society that get created destroys all the things in society that get destroyed. And so we essentially, we're always moving from our spiritual self, our feelings and our longings, these things that don't have any um, physical component to them really, but they, they drive us and they force us or bring us into being um, active in the world and creating things in the world. And so the physical world is a reflection of the combined longings and feelings and thoughts that we all have. And so that in that way, we're basically spiritual beings. And so communication skills have a... Are you there? James? Hello? Uh, Hello? Hello? Hi, this is Suzanne. Is, is James there or did James drop off? Hello? It sounds like he dropped off. Well, Tommy, um, hopefully he'll be able to rejoin us. Uh, tell me what uh, is happening today in your spiritual growth cycle, Tommy. Well, I just did a real incredible show last night. Uh, so it was like we had five speakers, five different people on there. Uh, one was mainly a host. He didn't speak that much. But we had one person that was a demonologist. Uh, and research it. We had another person that claimed, I don't know how he does or says what he says, but he claims he's working with the government and he's working with uh, traveling with aliens and graves and all that. And it was, I, I don't know, I kind of like debated everything he said about that. Uh, we had one psychic who was pretty cool and we had a, a, a person that works with dreams. And it was such a really twisting, winding road that we went down uh, due to everybody's specific agendas or what they deal with and everything else. It, we got into some incredible ideas, though. Uh, well, James one, is back one, now, Tommy. Let's, oh, okay. let's no get problem. back to James. Uh, let's hope he's here. James, I might have missed dialed or somehow I got you to answer my phone. I could hear you, but you were on my cell phone. But you, now you're back on the studio, right? Yes, I am. I am. I'm sorry about that. Oh, yay. That. Me too. Okay, folks, we don't know what happened, but it doesn't matter. He's back now. Okay, I'll go back on mute again, and all my guests, uh, you guys mute yourself if you have a button, uh, and if, if, hopefully there won't be any noise in the background. But you started off with how to transform, and we have people listening all over the world. So help us out here, James. Now, I understand you're a facilitator in Maui, Hawaii, and you have a website called peaceful.ly instead of .com. That's peaceful, the word, .ly. Now, start over again, James. You're, you've been helping people for a long time, and uh, we got off to a bounce into our cell phones somehow. I'm not sure if the studio did it or we did because we we're all up there in cyberspace. But back to you, James. So I will mute now, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you know, I wanted to 
the, the website address. I do have peaceful.ly as one of my addresses, but the one that I'd like everyone to know about around communication skills is mindfulspeech.training, mindfulspeech.training. So if you're interested in these ideas, please go there and we can connect. So, yeah, I wanted to go into a little bit about how we're spiritual beings and all of our thoughts and longings and feelings and all of our rich in, inner world are reflected in our speech, and we can't really even help it. Our speech is driven just like our actions are driven by our inner world, our rich spiritual world. So if we have a desire for something, then we're going to be speaking about it. If we have some kind of attachment, some kind of a dramatic relationship with something, that's going to come out in our speech as well. If we feel like our happiness is um, contingent on someone that we're in a relationship with being different or doing something that they don't want to do, all of that stuff is going to come out in our speech. And so when we listen, when we know how to listen to other people's speech in a certain way, and we know how to come from a certain place in our own speech, we can actually include our spiritual life in our actual day-to-day -day life and in our relationships in a, in a really transformative way. So that's the, that's the perspective on communication skills that I take. And um, so uh, just to give you an idea, um, you know, just to give you an idea, I'll give you one, one idea. So if I'm upset with someone, if I have something in me that's, that's bothering me, and that's a spiritual experience that I'm having. It's, a, it's an experience that I'm, I'm struggling with my relationship with the universe, you could call it I'm struggling with my relationship with God. Whatever it is, I am, I'm kind of stuck and I'm needing something that I don't feel like I'm getting, right? And let's say I'm, I'm projecting that onto someone else. Like I'm really upset with them. I, I see them as the source of my upset. There are so many ways that I could address that situation. You know, people in intimate relationships, you know, they get vulnerable and intimate with each other. And then all kinds of sensitive issues come up and, you know, difficulties and challenges and arguments and fights come up, conflicts come up. So it's pretty common that this could happen between people. So if, if I want that other person to be different, maybe I want that person to do something that they don't want to do. There's a lot of things that I, a lot of different ways that I could address the situation with my speech. A lot of the typical ways would actually degrade my relationship with the other person. Maybe I could try to threaten them or use a tone of voice that's like, condescending or is meant to instigate their shame or is somehow destroy really or degrade the rapport and relationship, the trust that we have in order to get this need met, in order to get my strategy met, right? But it, I, could, I could use any number of techniques if I know about them. I could take a breath. I can take a step back and I can think and I can act intentionally instead of just acting kind of from the hip just with whatever is the first thing that wants to come out of my mouth, which is not always the thing that's going to really um, have me feeling the most satisfied and having the other person feeling like feeling loved, feeling accepted, feeling uh, free to do what they want, you know, a sense of choice and freedom and acceptance in what, they, what is going to work for them, which is something that I really want to have the people around me in my life feeling. So I can, we can call this, um, you know, I guess the, the least, the least skillful way to speak would be, I, I would call that person a name. I would say, you're a, you're a jerk or something like that. And that obviously is really painful to hear. It's painful to say. It degrades the relationship. And, um, and it's not even necessarily true. I mean, the person, actually, it's just a label that I'm trying to put on the person in order to get them to submit to me or to change their mind and do something <laughs> that I want them to do. But it's a, it's a really... a, a um, it's to cross purposes with what I really want, which is I want to be happy, right? Everyone wants to be happy. That is, we do everything that we do just to be happy. And this is part of our spiritual life as well. How do we cultivate that kind of an inner world, that kind of an inner life where we do feel feelings of fulfillment, presence, relaxation, meaning, purpose, connection, and peace? And how do we cultivate those? Well, we have um, the benefit of having um, the longest study on human happiness that was ever conducted. It was a Harvard University study, and it has gone on for 75 years, where they took Harvard students who were sophomores, and they took uh, um, 
men of a similar age in a kind of a low income community in Boston. And they followed them and they interviewed them throughout their 